Welcome to Decatech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're talking about Wilbur. Wilbur the bookworm, Wilbur the mentor, the old mage that knows everything and would like to teach his other wizard companions how to get things done. Uh, Wilbur here will be a, this is going to be a support guide, I'm trying to uh, usually pair it up with a mage and uh, copy spells over. A lot of cool effects that can be done with this Wilbur. Now this will be a, uh, this guide will be showing you specifically my deck lists for a Frost, um, a chill, a, a chill wet team uh, supporting Evelyn, but I will give you the general tips for any sort of support Wilbur. Uh, usually there will be a lot of spell casting involved and like a, a lot of spell cards and passing them to your teammates. So I'll try to give you some ideas of what you'd change differently for the other teams. But usually that's just a matter of switching the elements uh, for who you're supporting, since most of the time it will be a mage. So a lot of this will apply there. Before we get too much into it, I would like to do a big thanks to those that have uh, been supporting me. Uh, it's really important that this channel has uh, grown to a thousand subscribers. I still like to see, I mean, 3000 subscribers. The, a thousand was the call to action. Um, but we do, I do have to figure out some, some changes here, uh, financially speaking, uh, with how I want to monetize the channel right now. Currently I have as minimum ads as possible on YouTube because I would like to keep this as ad free as possible. Also, um, I do need to figure out some other options beyond that, uh, whether that's, um, Patreon or a, uh, subscription subs channel subscriptions through YouTube, that sort of stuff uh, to see where the next steps for this channel are so that I can keep making this content. But uh, in the meantime, the best thing you can do is give me some feedback on what you like to see and or if you have any ideas on uh, the kind of the routes you'd like to see the channel go, give me that input too. The more input I have from you, the better I am able to make uh, that happen. The, I would like uh, what we do in the future to best reflect what you would like to see because this channel is here for you and uh yeah that's uh enough of that uh let's get uh straight into wilbur so wilbur's claim to fame is going to be books i'm going to say that word a lot but uh the passive here is energize uh you do not have control of where this goes it is one random energy to one random teammate and uh maybe that's helpful maybe that's not but uh it's definitely no downside to it so yeah we like it uh, level two, we have skillful or circuit overload. Circuit overload is only if you're supporting an electric team or spark team. But if you're supporting a spark team, you're probably just going to be the DPS in that team. So not really for us. Skillful is the, the pickup of choice. I personally end up cutting it most of the time, though, because the play pattern on it is a little awkward. Yes, we will have skills. and uh, But depending on your play pattern, you're not going to play those skills after this. You're going to play them before it. Because if I have no way to guarantee this in my opening hand, but I have a way to guarantee a lot of other skills in my opening hand, then um, turns out I just I might not play skills after this. So pay close attention. Go ahead and try and pick it up. Um, see if you actually get any value out of it. And the biggest value would just be drawing cards. We don't need the powerful and we don't need the fast. Uh, at least you want your fast on turn one. You don't necessarily need it on future turns. So and powerful, we're not doing a lot of damage. So see how many cards you're drawing with it. Uh, if you're not drawing more than one or two, then I would recommend cutting it in Act 2. Uh, just kind of see what kind of mileage you get out of it. Uh, to each their own, I usually cut it most of the time. But the big reason we're here for is Scholar. <laughs> Scholar says, hey, when you play a book, reduce the cost of the highest card in your hand by one, twice a turn. Uh, there are no ifs, ands, or buts here. No until end of turns, no until discarded. This is a permanent reduction. And you can repeat, reduce the same card over and over until it's free. Uh, we will be playing, highly be playing around this. My goal is to, uh, we're going to reduce a card by two and pass it to our teammates. Because if you notice, Wilbur's starting card here says, uh, duplicate a spell and uh, give it to your teammate. Whether that's shuffling it into their deck or putting it on top of their deck, depending on how powerful your Wilbur is and how leveled up they are. Uh, so the goal is we're going to be reducing that spell by two before we pass it to our teammate. This does not come online until the until level three. So we'll try to talk about that a little bit in the act one deck here, or whether or not you play into it right away or not. Uh, but the goal is to uh, reduce things. The big issue here with uh, Scholar is that all the games, all the books in the game burn. Um, super ironic book burning in the game, very much so. Uh, if you've not read the book Fahrenheit 451, 
I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it's a good take on book burning and knowledge. And I think it's, it's hilarious. And I think of every time I think about Wilbur and the fact that in this game, all the books in the game burn, except for the fire book and uh, a couple other random ones that we'll talk about when we get there. But uh, the the struggle to making this consistent beyond just your first turn or two is you're going to run out of books. So you will probably run out of books before you run out of cards to reduce their costs. So we're just going to probably plan on doing this on turn one, turn two. And then after that, like we got our value out of it. It's great because every time you play that card afterwards, you will have saved energy, which is fantastic. We'll take arc is for a different build. We're not picking it up. Same thing with Tessa coil. These are all lightning stuff. If you're doing lightning stuff, that's go check out the lightning guide for Wilbur transcribe. This is the book stuff. Uh, this one is kind of like skillful, except for I'm never going to cut it because it has absolutely no downside. As long as I had any book to copy, I get value out of this. The problem I find out is that the play pattern of Wilbur is I get this transcribe on turn two or three after I've done all the powerful things that Wilbur does. And all I'm copying is really just a scroll of intellect, which, hey, I'm not going to say no to another scroll of intellect, but really this just says for me in my play pattern, add scroll of intellect to your hand. Uh, there are other play patterns where if you have like an encyclopedia or a cursed mnemonicon, this is really fun to duplicate those and it's hilarious and fantastic and I love it. Uh, but uh, if you don't get any mileage out of it in this guide, yeah, it's it's because we're just playing these super efficient and uh, uh, very, very strict play pattern Wilbur in this guide. And I, I, I say that because Wilbur is one of the few characters that can do it. And so I highly suggest trying it. And then if you want to loosen it up a bit, find some cool things to pair with transcribe with and, and have at it. Um, like I said, Encyclopedia or Carson and Monicon are my favorite ones to pair this with. I just won't see those in this guide because you can't guarantee uh, those. Yes. Energizer. Uh, that's our level five because it pairs really well with our passive. You honestly don't have to pair it with anything else other than your passive, but you will happen to just have scrolls of intellect lying around. So it goes great there. Uh, it goes really great with things like uh, equivalent exchange, but I would not pick cards in your deck specifically for this because this only affects two or three fights at the end of the game. And honestly, you don't need it. Like it's if you need this energy, then something weird was happening in your game beforehand, because by the time you get this perk or this talent, it's it's almost become obsolete, if that makes any sense. So don't really don't really do any deck building around this. It's just think of it as free energy at random with your passive and or if you happen to play a couple cards that have energized don't don't play into it there's no need to do so all right let's get to the starting deck so with wilbur like i said it all depends on what element you're supporting uh if you're supporting a fire mage you want to bring in things like ember storm or things that say burn and uh if you're supporting a frost mage you want to bring in things that say frost or wet and uh since i'm supporting a frost mage i brought in wet I crafted another water jet because as weird of a card it is, it's actually really good in the chill, chill wet team and uh, rains because of play wet. And you also want to make sure you got two things. You want cards that are efficient just for efficiency sake of like the damage type you're doing. But you also want to make sure that you're applying, you're getting, picking up at least one card that you want to copy to your teammate. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use twin scrolls and shifting scroll here to try to get a Frost Nova over to Evelyn, or in the case of a, you know, a fire team, it would be uh, a Combustion or a Searing Nova or a Scorching Ray, whatever, whatever your most powerful card of choice for that element is, you know, Shock Nova for Lightning, that kind of stuff. You're going to want to pick up something you want to copy over and then just whatever is efficient. So with the copying over, let's talk about that right away. Shifting Scroll. So Bookworm, and shifting scroll both read basically the same. Uh, I say basically the same, but bookworm, bookworm is a good one. Let's talk about this one first. Find two books, put one in your hand. Yes, no downside unless you have no books in your deck, which is is a possibility. But we're gonna pick the innate version that costs zero, so that we're trying to just guarantee turn one finding twin scrolls. And as long as you don't have more than two books in your deck outside of what's in your starting hand, then you're guaranteed to find the twin scrolls. And you can see, I only have three books in my deck, two scrolls of speed and a twin scrolls, but the scrolls of speed are innate. 
and are starting in my hand, so I will always find Twin Scrolls with Bookworm. The only downside is if I draw Bookworm and Twin Scrolls on turn one, and I don't have anything to find in my deck with Bookworm, I just have a dead card. But I'm going to plan around making that as happen as few as possible, and I'm, I'm now limited to not having more books in my deck than the amount of Bookworms I have plus one, if that makes any sense. Like, if I have Twin Scrolls and a Scroll of Intellect, then Bookworm is still guaranteed to find the Twin Scrolls. And that's what we want to do. I want to always maintain my deck so that I can start the game with a Bookworm and it finds the Twin Scrolls. I said those names several times. I apologize. Watching it in action will be much better than me talking about it. But it is now a deck limitation I've set on myself to guarantee finding Twin Scrolls on turn one. Shifting Scrolls is going to do the similar thing. The problem with Shifting Scrolls is, is that you find the spells, you put them into your hand, you, find, you look at two, you put it in your hand, that's all the same except for, and discard a spell. So this one, you have to have a spell in your hand before you cast it if you want any good effect out of it, if you want that spell in your hand afterwards, which we want it in our hand afterwards because we need to copy it over with Twin Scrolls. So for Shifting Scroll, it has the same stipulation of I don't want more than, you know, two spells in my deck if I want to guarantee finding the one I want, which is in this case, Frost Nova, and we'll upgrade that later as the acts go on. But Frost Nova is the goal of the card I'm trying to cast over to Evelyn. But obviously you see, I have way more than two spells, so that's not going to happen. But I need to also make sure that I always have one spell in my hand with Shifting Scroll, which in my current setup is actually pretty dangerous. I might end up not having a spell in my opening hand if I have, if I draw Prismatic Field and Twin Scrolls because that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there is a chance where I miss, or I brick, or I whiff, or whatever you want to call it. These are all terms that apply to this situation. Uh, but that chance is very low, and we're going to try to mitigate that. And as the deck goes on, I'm going to make that impossible to miss. Uh, but right now, my only missed chance is if I draw Twin Scrolls and Prismatic outside of my innate. And that's very rare to happen, because I have so many other spells. I won't always guarantee having this Frost Nova in my opening hand or being able to find it with Shifting Scroll, but the Shifting Scroll is nice to help me make that happen. And this is where I'm talking about, you don't necessarily have to play into this play pattern until level three. And if you want to do that, what I'd recommend is don't craft Bookworm right away. Wait until Act 2 or Act 3 to, to craft this and actually cut the Shifting Scroll in your starting deck and craft a new one later because you only need one Shifting Scroll and it's super cheap to craft. So just, just remove this one, don't craft the bookworm, play normally until act two or three when you want to shift into this gear. And then you're going to bring in the bookworm and the shifting scroll, and you're going to try to plan out your turn one so that you guarantee the twin scrolls copy over. Yes. Seeing it in action will make a lot more sense. Uh, and then you want as many efficient spells as possible. Other than that, ice lances are super efficient in a chill deck because I have chill perks that I slow down my enemies and they're just high damage for a chill team. And then Prismatic Field, you do want to give your team Insulate. Uh, you won't be casting this on turn one very often. Normally it's going to be turn two, but that's still helpful against things like the Tree, uh, Yilmer, or like Ignado. Uh, most of the fights where you want Insulate, you don't need it until turn two or turn three anyway. So it's okay that we're not playing at turn one. It's also very nice that it's adding Powerful, and we'll see some perks play into that. Uh, yes. I feel like that should answer anything. We, there's, there's a lot of cards we cut. Just, just kind of look at them. I, I don't have the, the list pulled up here to talk about them all, but, uh, you just want efficient elemental cards of your variety, a card that you're copying over to your teammate and, uh, the manipulation thereof. We didn't talk about scrolls of speed. Uh, speed manipulation is great. Uh, you don't need these scrolls of speed. I highly recommend them. Uh, try playing with them see if you get any use out of them if you don't feel free to cut them just so there's more room for you have to uh to manipulate your turn one a little more uh yep 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 let's go to perks so with perks these left four columns these two uh pick your survival of choice to your heart's content these two pick your resources of uh desire to your heart's content remember this is uh me playing on madness 14 you may have more shards, less shards, depending on your difficulty and or your uh, the way you've set up your game plan accordingly with these as needed. Uh, speed, we want Wilbur to be going as fast as possible and speeding up our teammates. So we want all the speed perks in both the speed himself and the fast perk charges. 
Uh, you're not going to be slowing anyone down unless you add Curse of Elements, which is okay if you pick that up, but you're not going to keep those in the late game, and there's not really any late game cards that Wilbur is going to be wanting to play. So if you're picking up this slow, it's really only for Act 1. Starting Energy, yes please. Nothing here. Elements, your element of choice. You'll usually either be supporting a Chill Team or a Fire Team. Pick up the according uh, the talents accordingly. Uh, you don't really need the plus damage perk because it costs three for two damage. I'd happily pick up these one-to-one -one ratios, though. Uh, feel free to pick this one up if you have spare perks. Uh, I had a couple spare perks where I picked up this Insulate and this uh, Wet does um, Wet Stops Burn because I was thinking I was going to go to the Fire Biome. I don't know if I did or not. I don't remember. Uh, but the ones you definitely want to pick up are the Elements of Choice and these powerful perks. I want to give extra perk, I mean, extra charges of powerful to my teammates through that insulate card. You want to pick up one extra card here with Inspire. And uh, yeah, there's really just a lot of free um, free perks for Wilbur. You're not really that perk greedy. You can pick up any team ones. You can pick up one of these uh, vulnerable ones if you need to for the team. Whatever the team needs, because really all you're really here for is the speed manipulation and this element of choice. All right. Let me make sure I'm doing these in order. Perks, Act 2 deck list. Oh, no, combat. Why is that not on my list? I need to update my list. Combat. So, remember, this combat, I'm showing you the kind of the play pattern of copying a spell over. You don't necessarily need it in Act 1. Maybe wait till Act 3 for it. He's immune to vulnerable. I'm doing cold damage, so this will go on a sheep. And then normal Magnus things. Otherwise, we're supporting an Evelyn team, so these will go here. All right, so Wilbur was not fast enough to go faster than this this Pumba, uh, this slowed down Pumba. Later, I will be needing items to make that not happen. I want to be making sure I'm going in front of the enemies, even if Magnus does not slow them down. Uh, try to play into it, because then that way these scrolls of speed become more powerful and I can throw them on my DPS. If you're going uh, fast enough turn one, then you'll use these scrolls of speed on your, your damage dealers. If you're not going fast enough, then you might throw these scrolls of speed on your tank. In this case, Magnus, if you look at here, he is going after Pumbaa on turn two. So I'll use these scrolls of speed on him to make sure that he is going room, room, fastest, fastest, will not get slowed down, and I he doesn't die as much on the next turn. Uh, otherwise, I do have a spell in my hand, so I will shifting scroll to uh, Bookworm first, find my twin scrolls. Look, there's no other books in my deck, so I found it. Yay! It's like I expected that to happen. And then shifting scroll, I'm looking for Frost Nova. Hey, look, I found it. Cool. If I didn't, I would just pick my favorite cards there. And um, one of these I'm going to copy over, and the other I'm going to cast. Uh, so I want to copy over Frost Nova, and Rain is very efficient. So these are the ones I play. Make sure you copy it before you cast it. I need to copy to Evelyn the Frost Nova. And then I'll proceed to play the Frost Nova. And if you're playing a chill team, then... Wilbur going fast is also helpful because you might have enough chill perks to slow down the team with the spell that you copy and cast. Otherwise, let me do normal things here. Uh, I could slow down Magnus and give him energy. Eh, we'll just call it a day. Bah! Get some sheep. Don't mind normal Evelyn things. Now, she has this copied Frost Nova. Because I have a leveled up Wilbur, it didn't shuffle into the deck. It, I'm looking for vanish cards. It went to the top of the deck uh, and put it on top of Target's deck. So that's nice. So she did not draw hers naturally. She still has one in the deck. So I could have drawn, I could have had two Frost Novas, but at least I was guaranteed the one that Wilbur passed over, which is nice. And then normal Evelyn things here. I have enough here to kill Pumba, barely. I should have killed. I should have killed the uh, corny. Corny's gonna screw things up because he's gonna shack. Whoopsies! This is what I get for uh, talking and playing at the same time. All right, Wilbur, turn two. So now all of the turn one shenanigans are gone. Now I'm just down to normal. The rest of my deck stuff, and it turns out the rest of my deck is pretty good. What do I want to kill? I want to kill this black sheep. This black sheep needs to die. Bah. Uh, then my guys are going to go, so it doesn't really matter what I kill otherwise. So kill some corn cobs. 
And so you see the turn one is the, I copy the spells over and turn two is I just do my efficient cards. So since the power of passing over the Frost Nova wasn't as good as if I had reduced the cost of it, or if I had a stronger spell to copy, it's okay to do your combo on later turns. And then you're just missing me cleaning up here, which doesn't really matter. All right, let's go to act two. Burr, burr. Wilbur. All right, so we've brought in, I brought in an extra bookworm here, which is nice. I brought in a scroll of intellect. I now have brought in more powerful spells to copy over and specifically this ray of frost. So let's talk about ray of frost. So with shifting scroll, remember one stipulation is I don't have more than three spells or sorry, more than more than two spells to search for, but I also have to have a spell in hand. So if you look here and if I go for spells, whoops, I can type spell and innate. There are only two cards that fit that bill, Ray of Frost and Pyroblast. There used to be three. They uh, decided to nerf it. We now have to wait for Ray of Frost and Pyroblast. So this Ray of Frost is in my deck literally just to start in my hand and for me to discard it to the Shifting Scroll. And if you look here, I only have three spells. I've got Rain, Squall. Squall is the one I want to copy and pat. I'm going to give it to Evelyn cheap and I'm going to play it myself. Eventually, I'm going to upgrade that to a, a bigger card, but the spell I'm copying. So the spell I'm copying, one extra spell and the Ray of Frost, which I will discard. Ray of Frost is just going to be a dead card in my deck for the rest of the game. Eventually, it'll come down to a zero cost if I play enough books, but uh, it's just here for the innate, just to enable the combo. And you also, with this combo, you have to start counting how many innate cards you have. So you remember I have that perk that gives me plus one card at the starting turn. So I have six cards in my opening hand. So I have to count how many innates I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can do it. And But the, the downside here is I can't upgrade this Tome of Intellect to blue. And with Wilbur... And the fact that, remember I said all the books burn, you want to find as many sources of books as possible. And one of those is this blue Tome of Intellect. I still recommend the yellow Tome of Intellect because it's more efficient, but if you want to get more triggers for your book stuff, so whether your items or your talents, and we'll talk about some items later, you'll want this blue Tome of Intellect, but the problem is it's innate, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. You just have to start managing the amount of innates you have. And so Wilbur is this unique beast, and I've had to record this video like four times to try to get it straight, because he is very, like, hyper-efficient, combo-tastic in his turn one play pattern, and having to manage how many innates you have in your deck, how many books you have in a deck, how many spells you have in your deck. And so, because of bookworms, I can't have more than an amount of bookworms plus one books in my deck, right? And with Shifting Scroll, I can't have more than two spells in my deck. So that means of all the mage cards, I have to start cutting out spells. I can't pick up too many spells. I have to count out books. I can't pick up books. And if you look at, there's really not much else that leaves left. The only thing that leaves left, that is left, I can speak. Only thing it leaves is skills. So the rest of my deck outside of my combo can only be skills. And there's not too many that do too many things. And of those skills, there's only a select few um, that interact with books. And with books, remember, all of them burn. So that we're in this really weird situation where I want as many books as possible, but they all burn. And I can't have any extra spells and I can't have any extra books. So you have to be very picky with what you add. And there's two cards here. Clear Instructions and Librarian, which don't vanish and that can generate books for you. Clear Instructions is a book itself, so you'll still always have a book to trigger your uh, your cost reduction and or your items. And Librarian will generate random books, which will give you more triggers for your books and your cost reductions. Um, but uh, you, these are the only two cards that won't vanish out of your deck. And if you remember with my combo on that, that even... Even in Act 1, I was running out of cards really fast because all this stuff burns. All this stuff vanishes, I mean. All the combo pieces vanish. And 
you're going to be left with very few cards left in your deck. And one of them is going to be this Ray of Frost that you don't really want to cast, or this Pyroblast. I think I think Pyroblast of the two, Pyroblast is better because I think I prefer... But it depends on who you're supporting. If you're supporting the Frost team, you do Ray of Frost. If you're supporting the Fire team, you do Pyroblast. And it's just, you eventually get it down to zero and cast it, right? And to do that, you're going to have to have this skill and book because I can't add extra books and I can't add extra spells and you have this weird play pattern. But if I were to add in this clear instructions, then I can't have the scroll of intellect or not this tome of intellect because then I have to have this weird issue where, you know, I can't have too many books. Scroll of intellect also, you have to be careful about upgrading it because once you upgrade it, it's either innate or this um, draw one that doesn't have inspire on it. Yes, this uh, yellow one's still good, but I'd rather as a support Wilbur be giving inspire than drawing a card for myself. So I recommend you got to be really careful when you upgrade it to this blue one because you can't have too many innates. So I, in this in this particular deck, because I have two bookworms, I can't have this innate scroll of intellect or this innate tome of intellect because I'm also running these scrolls of speed for my team. So you got to manage this. It's a, it's a kind of a juggling act. I'm still not sure I'm explaining this clearly, but uh, pay close attention to how many innates you have, how many spells you have, how many books you have. And if you want ways to consistently repaint books, there is only two, ideally two cards that do that. This Clear Instructions and this Librarian. And I think the other ones that don't burn is there's a Frost Book and a Burning Book, Grimoire Flames. Um, you're throwing fireballs into someone's deck, though. And this uh, Winter's Night's Tale, where you're doing random books into your own deck. So... Very few options left to you. Pick and choose the ones you want. They're all unique in their own ways, and there's so many play patterns. Like I said, I've tried recording this four or five times. It's complicated. There's pieces to it. This will get you there. Count count up the pieces and make it happen. I'll show you the play pattern here in Act 4. Um, but yeah, it's a process. All right. Let me make sure I talked about all the stuff there. So we talked about innates. We talked about books burning, Fahrenheit 451, if you haven't read that. Uh... Talked about all Zach two cards. There's really your turn one combo and then whatever's left over. Oh yeah, things not vanishing. I have Ray of Frost, Squall. I maybe I already did this. Three. I only have like four cards here that don't vanish. Four or five. So it's it's a thing. I right, items. So the reason that Wilbur is here supporting Evelyn is when you're playing a support Wilbur. You want pens, you want freezing ink, you want fountain pen, or you want quill. These all say, when you play a book, do something fantastic. Fountain pen is easily the best card in the game. Freezing ink is really the uh, the best DPS uh, for a chill wet team. I'd still probably run fountain pen over freezing ink, sadly enough. Uh, I don't know, debatable. But these, these are the effects you're looking for. When play book, do something fantastic. Uh, for fire, I don't think there's... There's not a really good fire one. So there's no equivalent for the fire team for freezing ink. So that's why the chill wet team is a little stronger. It's got a little more support item-wise. And burning is in a bad place in general. Uh, you don't really necessarily need these when you play spells draw cards thing. Because by the time you're playing things that are outside your combo, you don't have any deck left to draw anymore. If that makes any sense. Uh, other than that, you want fast. You want things that say speed. You want to be going faster than your teammates so you can speed them up. At least that's the way I suggest doing it. If you haven't tried it that way, do it at least once. If you decide that's not for you, find something else. There's plenty of good armor options. There's really not much to talk about other than saying books and speed for Wilbur. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything equipment-wise. Yes. Let's talk about pets. Pets for Wilbur. Uh, if you're supporting a wet team, Downpour is great, so Chumpy. If you're supporting a fire team, Asmodee is great because it adds a little burning. Uh, if you're supporting uh, a lightning team, lightning, uh, Stormy is great. Nice thing about Stormy, though, is if you have a the, the nodes to upgrade a pet, the upgraded Stormy will cast uh, Storm, which adds wet to all the opponents, which is great for either both a chill wet team or a lightning wet team. 
usually though uh, on the chill team Wilbur the support will pick this up and on the DPS team I mean on the the lightning team the, the DPS will pick it up so depending on your team comp and then of course just anything that removes a uh, buffer from the opponents be that slimy or where is it the or oculi those ones will remove buffer which allow you to apply debuffs to the opponents yes that is all and of course everyone can run chompy because chompy just says draw cards yep that's it for pets all right let's go to act four and then after act four we'll do a combat if you're looking forward to combat that is the thing i am looking forward to do, do act four so with the Act 4 decklist, I'm still running a White Scroll of Intellect because I can't afford to make it innate. I'm running the Yellow Tome of Intellect, one, because I think it's better, and two, because I can't run another innate. I have this transcribed, but all it's really going to be doing is copying the Scroll of Intellect. I have Cold Snap because it's helping me cast these spells again. And with Evelyn, what's really nice is when you want to copy spells over to your teammates, uh, especially for planning for Archon, have one that's an AoE and have one that's single target. So for all the non-Archon fights or boss fights, you can reduce and copy over a cheap, I mean, an AoE that's super strong, Blizzard being a fantastic card, and or a single target card for like Winter Orb kind of thing. So pick the one that affects your team comp the best, that is best utilized for them. And remember, I only have three spells in this deck, Blizzard, Winter Orb, and Ray of Frost. Everything else is a book or a skill that's, or something that starts in my hand because I want to guarantee drawing the correct card that I want. I do have more than 15 cards because I my turn one is guaranteed to always be the same no matter what I do, unless for some reason the enemy goes before me and puts a uh, an injury in my deck. And remember, that's, that's one reason to go super fast on Wilbur is since I'm running all these innate cards in this combo, uh, an injury added to my deck will screw that up if it's thrown on top of the innates because that can happen. Because your deck is set at the beginning of combat, not the beginning of your turn with the innates. I uh, I think I just want to go straight to the combat. I feel like I might be missing something, but uh, I don't like talking. Oh, I was supposed to pick that corruptor. I'm getting distracted. My apologies. All right. Wilbur is going super fast, going for the rest of my team. I have six and eight cards. I know exactly what I'm going to draw, and I know exactly the play pattern I'm going to do. First off, I want a shifting scroll first because I need to get the card that I want to reduce in my hand. So Blizzard, since it's an AoE fight, these are the only two in my deck, so those are the only two options. And I need to discard this Ray of Frost, and you'll see it is now reduced to four. I'm also triggering Freezing Ink every time I'm playing a book, and I have one more charge of when play book, reduce this Blizzard. So let's go find those books. Bookworm, Twin Scrolls, I need to copy the spell over, and Bookworm, Tome of Intellect, these are the only two left in my deck. So even if Twin Scrolls wasn't in my first set of options, since I had two Bookworms, I'm guaranteed to find these two every time. I just always skip on the Scroll of Intellect. And now my second book for the turn will reduce the Blizzard down to three. Hey, look, it's a three. And I'll copy that over to Evelyn. She has a three cost copy. I have a three cost copy. I have three energy. Hey, look, that's nice. I like it. Speed up the rest of my team. My whole team is now going before the enemies, and I am casting a powerful spell, and there is a cheap version in Evelyn's hand. So let's go look at Evelyn's hand and see how that looks like. Let me just breeze through the rest of these if I can manage. Entrench or Carnage? We'll do Entrench. I like cards and energy and speed. Faded Future is nice for Evelyn. Bless is nice for Evelyn. Those don't really have to do with Wilbur per se, but uh, I just have to talk through my hand as I play it. I apologize if that is bothersome. If you want to see more about this, I have also have the, the same team. Evelyn is part of the combo. What do I got left? Six energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so this guy is immune to chill, so I have to give him the reduced resistances. I would like to bless my teammates some more. Give my team some courage and inspire. I think she's maxed out on inspire. Yep. So I can give this to Magnus. Alright, so now Evelyn has this fantastic turn. 
she can destroy this enemy team three times over because she has this three cost blizzard in her hand now which i can even discard it and make it cheaper if i wanted to uh yep yep don't worry me i'm just doing quick decisions here because we're not here to see evelyn but the idea is because she's got her i now have two copies of blizzard one from her own deck and one from wilbur's deck and the wilbur one is cheaper and so i can still play all the cards here i can now like i can play blizzard once i can play blizzard twice i could play blizzard three times i'm not going to because then this fight would be over i could play winter wars like a lot of this was from Wilbur giving her a cheap blizzard, which is fantastic, and speeding her up before the enemies. But let's look at Wilbur's turn two. Uh, I did not add the... Remember I said there's two cards, the ones that... A skill that makes books and a book that makes skills? Um, I didn't add either of those because I don't expect my fights to go long enough for that to be a thing. But it's a lot of fun to consistently reduce cards and see cards go down to zero, so I'm not going to begrudge anyone doing that. Um, we just want to see Wilbur's turn, so let's uh, just go to Wilbur's turn. <laughs> I think last time I did Mass Dispel, which is why Wilbur went before. Like in my, my previous run of this, uh, Wilbur went before Evelyn so that Evelyn could... Uh... Anyway, so here's Wilbur. So I now don't have much deck list left. Because I had granted Inspired to everyone in the world, I now drew the rest of my deck. And most of it still vanishes because all these books vanish. So when I play a book here, I'm going to reduce the highest cost, which is unfortunately this Ray of Frost, which is unfortunate. I wish I could discard the Ray of Frost. So let's give someone energy. That reduced the Winter's Orb. That's good. So I can now... Whatever, I'm just giving these to random people. I now can Frozen Orb, Cold Snap back, Frozen Orb. And, like, this Blizzard is still cheap. This Winter Orb will always be cheap. Evelyn still has her cheap Blizzard. Like, as long as if I had that card that made books, or I could keep making books, then I could, uh... He's immune to chill, so this is doing absolutely no damage. <laughs> but you can see I'm playing multiple copies of cards and they're all cheap and the next turn i'll reduce something down two more costs and then two more costs so every turn you take your deck is just getting more and more cheap and efficient and you're not going to have much of your deck left because books burn and yes that is all and i could have killed that all in round one but uh you know you don't need to plan on that but his deck one his turn one as you can see was i'm always going to do that every fight is always going to be that way archon is going to be the same I could delay the pattern a little bit if I wanted to give Evelyn a cheaper copy of the Frozen Orb or the Blizzard. But honestly, just that two cost reduction and copying it over is perfectly great. There's no reason to go uh, to delay it a turn unless you're having like struggling with an Archon or something like that or playing around that. All right. Uh, so that was the Act 4 decks. We did the combat. Uh, team comps. So Wilbur, let's talk about this team comp in particular. Oops, I deleted it. Let me Let me go get that back. Uh, no. Mm. I do this every time. I should have just finished that combat. Mm -hmm. Play. Okay, so in this team combat in particular, Magnus is here doing vulnerable and has all the defensive stuff and is making sure that if Wilbur can't slow down the enemy. All right, if Wilbur can't speed up the team, then Magnus will slow down the enemies and give them bottom. Nesgut here is the healer, doing normal healer things and blessing up Evelyn with the rest of the cards that Wilbur can't give her and with uh, Bless. Because mages, Wilbur as a, as a support can be giving a lot of uh, cards and energy, and it's specifically that energy that mages can do that other supports can't do. And then there's, of course, all supporting Evelyn, who is going pew, pew, burr, burr. 
Evelyn goes burr. Sorry, this part I don't know how what to say because I, I can't think and click at the same time. So I apologize if there's a little bit of dead space there. That's this team in particular. And with that, Wilbur just really wants to support... Oh, here, I, I can click this. Really wants to support these mages because he's copying spells over. He can also support a Magnus DPS because with Magnus, if you look at Thunderclap, all damage increased by 200%. This sticks around until he plays an attack. So Magnus plays normal things, and then Magnus at level 4 gets Thunderclap, and suddenly Wilbur starts copying over Blizzards or Frozen Orbs or dis Disintegrates? I've not copied a Disintegrate over yet, but you just you, you give him some powerful spell, and uh, he can cast it at plus 200% damage, and it'll stay in his deck, and he can cast it again. And if it's cheap enough and he has enough card draw, he can cast it multiple times in a combat. And uh, it gets pretty silly. But usually, you'll just be supporting Evelyn or Cornelius. Um, and or anyone that needs a lot of energy or can use a, a spell. Reginalds and Otises can actually go with that really well too because they have a lot of bless. Uh, Sharp, unfortunately, does not affect any spells that I know of unless you transform. So you could use Wilbur with... Uh, one of these scouts for physical DPS if you had a weapon that transformed your damage type to uh... nope because sharp wouldn't affect it my apologies dark dark now that sharp affects dark um, you can play one of these sharp players so a scouts and andrew and a fools a sylvie um, if they have a lot of sharp on them and you have the perk that says sharp does dark and then Wilbur could copy over a cards, a shadow card. Sorry, I kept saying dark when I meant shadow. He can copy over a shadow spell, and I'm pretty sure there's one that double dips here. Dark Future. So he just copies over Dark Future to one of them, and then Sharp is buffing the shadow damage, and you're doing two applications of it, and then suddenly they can do the the dark future a couple times and one thing i forgot to mention which i apologize and i'll try to make a note of it here somewhere that with with transcribe if you're not doing the turn one combo version you can copy twin scrolls so what you can do is you can transcribe copy over with twin scrolls and then copy over with twin scrolls and you give someone two copies of something that's been reduced and uh i've i've made short clips about this before and i'm sorry i forgot to mention about it in this video uh, I've just, like I said, I've had like three or four takes of this Wilbur video trying to make it succinct. Uh, so with someone like, if you're going to pair him with a scout like Thules or, or Sylvia or whatnot, you're probably going to want to do the version of the combo where you, um, you copy over two copies of the spell. You, you transcribe your twin scrolls and that lines up, um, also lines up with the, the, when Magnus gets his thunderclap because He'll get Thunderclap the same time you're getting Transcribe. And so you can give him two spells and he can cast both of them and then he can redraw them and that kind of thing. So, yes, it's late. I've, I've done this take several times and Wilbur is really hard to talk about because there's just so many things he can do with it. So uh, Magnus giving him free copies to go with Thunderclap. Scouts giving them dark spells, and, sorry, shadow spells that they can do sharp with. Mages... Um, you could give them their whatever spell they're casting, just give them another copy of it. And then Reginald and Otis, because they have lots of bless going on, there are a couple spells that work well with them. I haven't done that as much, but I know Reginald just likes any AoE spell that's zero cost. Like or repeat spells. Like cause Blizzard, because Blizzard is the most efficient on hit. It works the best with Bless. Uh of cards to scale with Bless, Blizzard has the highest ceiling. So giving the a zero cost or a two cost blizzard to Reginald is actually pretty pretty powerful. It's not a holy spell, it's not gonna trigger his holy spell stuff, but just because he has so much bless, it will do a lot of damage there. Yep, yep, yep. I'm done talking about Wilbur. Uh let me make sure I did everything. Team comms unlock to unlock Wilbur. Um are you sure you want to exit? Yes. I do not have the fire biome here. I have Fabor Forest. But what happens is you go to the fire biome, 
you path up to his node, accept his quest, and then you go to in Act 4, you have to go to the library. You go up to the library here, and the I think it's the top option or the bottom option. The, they, they fixed it now. It should have a Wilbur thing. Uh, it's the bottom option. It says research flying devices. And so fire to pick up the quest, library to finish the quest. You then have Wilbur. Very straightforward. Um, yep, that's everything. Hope you like this video. Uh, very rambly because there are so many things to talk about Wilbur. So many things I wanted to cover and I didn't very well. As it is, I missed one or two of them. And uh, if you like it, let me know by uh, by saying so. And or these are free, but tips are welcome. Peace.